Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. I have a ton of things to talk about and I really want to talk to you guys about the massive catalyst event in the room. Uh, I've been talking to you guys about it. I've been discussing it for a while, but I do want to talk to you guys more so about what to really expect very, very soon. So with that being said, sit back, relax. And before we fully jump into this video, I just want to ask you guys if you guys could please leave a like on this video. It does help the channel grow immensely and I do greatly appreciate it. Also for anybody who is new here, definitely consider subscribing and turning notifications on by the end of this video. But with that being said, let's just jump in and let's discuss what is happening. So we just seen Bitcoin kind of switch into a green state, um, but we have been seeing a lot of green across the board for a lot of altcoins, including XRP. Uh, currently, the dominance on XRP is only around 1.98%, but I do suspect that this will be around um, possibly 20% to 30% by the end of this bull run, as there is going to be a lot of pretty much money flowing throughout the market, especially into you know altcoins as they do get flipped more and more. And of course, XRP being an OG laggard asset, it will most likely lag behind a a lot of the other assets and it will pretty much run last. I've discussed this multiple times and I've also talked to you guys about this on Twitter as well where a lot of people kind of just lose faith in an asset like XRP just because it's not moving uh, as well as other assets but of course by the end of this bull run I think a lot of people will be you know having their eyes open to what is actually happening within this market especially with a lot of these OG laggard assets but with that being said let's actually move on and let's talk about what has happened. So first off I hope that you all have set up a trust line. If you guys haven't and you guys do want to learn more about about how to do so, definitely go check out Stidus. I hope that I said his name right, XRP underscore Crow on Twitter. He pretty much has a ton of guides on this. There's a few other ones out there as well. I've discussed this in the Discord, but setting up a trust line for legitimate projects, I mind you, because there's a lot of assets that are on Zoom or on the XRP ledger that just do not provide that much value and you do get airdrop them, but there's no real risk to it, but I just don't think that participating in an airdrop for an asset that has zero value should be in your best interest. But of course, definitely check out Solo because Solo is going to be one of those assets that has a ton of value behind it. And of course, you do get this airdropped for free. All you have to do is hold your XRP in something like Zoom or if you guys do hold it on cold storage like say for so you know, a Ledger Nano X or a Ledger S, you can actually set up an XRP toolkit to get these airdrops. This is immense value. In fact, a lot of these airdrops have provided me with more value than most airdrops in the past. Also, I just got my ELS airdrop and that is worth like, I think almost a thousand or so XRP, which that is a significant amount, especially for most people. So definitely make sure you are utilizing these airdrops to your liking. Of course, it is too late to get the ELS airdrop, but I did warn you guys in the Discord beforehand. Um, uh, but you want to get in on this. The snapshot is December 24th with the airdrop being January 20th. Guys, definitely get in on this uh, as soon as possible. And like I said, Stetis has a ton of guides on how to get, get this as well as pretty much it's on his website as well to really kind of look into it. Um, but definitely do so to never miss out on another airdrop. Now, also, we are seeing Bitso and Circle partner to launch cross-border payments toll between Mexico and the U.S. Now, you might be wondering, well, what does this have to do with XRP? Well, Bitso is actually a Ripple partner. Now, of course, could this possibly be, you know, some sort of, you know, partnership that, you know, leverages XLM or Stellar. It could be, uh, especially considering the USD stuff with Stellar, but also Bitso has a little bit of connections to Stellar. But I think that this is more so um, to do with Ripple, uh, especially considering the fact that this is a cross payments tool that is providing immense value as well as, you know, really fast and cheap cross border payments as well. And we do know that Bitso is utilizing them uh, on a day to day basis for the similar sort of use case. But of course, we have to wait to see an actual named partnership throughout this until we do speculate a little bit. I don't like to speculate, but we do see here uh, with backing from large crypto based firms like Coinbase and Ripple, uh, Bitso has became one of the biggest crypto platforms in Latin America. We actually seen an article uh, posted around this regarding it becoming a unicorn as well. So pretty big. I think that that is interesting. Now we also see here XRP whale transactions have been on the rise since July. A host of prominent spikes have been recorded on the chart of late. 
And of course, we will continue to see this. I, I think in November, we're going to be seeing a lot of accumulation happening for XRP. And I think that a lot of people are preparing for that as well. Um, XRP has been one of those assets that has been lagging extremely hard compared to most assets. In fact, you know, at our current price, yeah, it's good for anybody who did buy 17 cents. Uh, but I understand that those individuals that were buying all along the time back here and even throughout here is not in immense, you know, pretty much profit compared to what most assets have done. Uh, you know, a lot of my buying was during March of 2020, but you know, if we're looking back in September and stuff of 2020, so just one year ago, you know, we are currently trading at about 25 cents or so. So it's like a four X if you will. And uh, if we're talking about in the middle of, you know, November, it's like 66 cents to 80 cents, 70 cents or so. Uh, so around this point, if you were buying, obviously I understand your frustration, or maybe you bought, you know, the top here and you thought that it was going to go higher. Uh, of course, you know, it is what it is, but you know, XRP is going to run last. And, that, and I, I think that that is what is terrible about the XRP community. Everybody thinks that it's going to run tomorrow, um, but it's not going to run like that. It's going to follow the same structure pattern, but we are getting to the wave five, which is very good for XRP holders and XRP in itself because altcoins are about to explode in price. But of course, XRP will be the last. So accumulate as much as you possibly can with profits on other altcoins. Uh, it doesn't hurt to pretty much kind of swing trade them into XRP. And I do think that we are going to see a lot of value being unlocked from XRP standpoint. I think a 10x from here is pretty much programmed. That's just my overall viewpoint, though. Of course, do your own research. Now, in terms of the SEC lawsuit with XRP, it does feel like we are in the matrix. Uh, sh shout out to Anders. Um, Obviously, it does feel like we are in a simulation. I mean, this entire lawsuit from the time of in, of its inception, I remember when it first came out, a lot of people were worried. A lot of people, people were scared. You know, there was a lot of things that we didn't know what was going on in, you know, a lot of the lawsuit papers. So, you know, obviously it looked fairly bad. But after, you know, some time went on, we found out and figured out that this entire lawsuit was just, you know, all sort of garbage. I mean, it, it didn't really kind of do any sort of harm to Ripple themselves. It did more harm to the investors than Ripple themselves. And they were, of course, trying to say that they were protecting us this entire time. And, you know, with all the updates and, you know, all of the things that are happening behind closed doors, we already know that they're trying to, uh, you know, protect the banking scene. They don't want DeFi because, of course, people are earning, you know, massive amounts of yield that are pretty much killing banks. It, it's just all sort of egotistical, you know, sort of, you know, positioning um, in regards to this power play on the, the SEC lawsuit but you know in my mind I think that we easily win and in terms of winning here is a video that we need to listen to of course I don't like BitBoy myself but I know a lot of people do um, but I just don't like him because of the idea of him like pretty much saying insider information without actually having any sources of course whatever it is you know it is what it is now listen closely to what John Deaton says as well as what BitBoy is saying here I still believe that when this case is over it is going to be explosive momentum for altcoins and XRP specifically. And I believe that we will, XRP will be the biggest gainer of the second half of this bull run once this happens. Well, what are your thoughts on the, the effect of the XRP settlement on the price when it does happen? I, I seem, tend to agree with you. I think that we're gonna see a, a revision of 2017, that XRP ripped the furthest, the fastest, mm -hmm. and the last one to rip. Um, and just like that, right? The, you know, it's, it's one of the last, but it is the fastest, the most. You know, he's talking about 2017. Okay, back here, you know, we did like 50,000 plus percents of a price move. You know, from just from the low in in November, right? The low here was about twenty cents. We jumped from like twenty and a half cents all the way to three dollars and almost forty cents, with three dollars and eighty four cents being on some exchanges, right? So that is a massive upside potential. I just want you guys to understand, and you know, if we do get that settlement, we're looking to repeat this exact same move, and we would be worth a hundred dollars plus. If we do repeat that same move, I just want you guys to understand. So, you know, obviously there's a lot of things to go on behind closed doors. We have to watch for a lot of things. You know, this space is going to be very different during that time if we do get a settlement. Um, but I do completely agree. I think that XRP is going to be one of the last to move. But if we do see a settlement happen, it is going to be the fastest moving, the most 
you know, percentage gains as well out of all other assets, especially once it has clarity. Now we also see here all Ripple, Coinbase, Binance, and Huobi Global have the same goal, which is regulatory clarity of cryptocurrencies. If only they are willing to work and fight together as one uh, for the crypto space. And I do think that at some point in time, a lot of these, you know, exchanges as well as, you know, other assets are going to join forces to really kind of combat, you know, the SEC because this is not just, you know, the SEC versus Ripple. We've seen that with Coinbase. We've seen, you know, that be a, a, become a fact, especially in regards to DeFi and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I think it would be in the best interest for exchanges, for, you know, other asset uh, teams and organizations in this space to really kind of come together and fight the SEC all together. Uh, we're seeing that with a lot of the stuff that, you know, Johnny Deaton is pretty much doing with the SEC lawsuit, um, class action lawsuit that he's pretty much building, which is 60,000 plus individuals with most of them not even being invested into XRP. In fact, they don't even like XRP, but they will fight the good fight for crypto because they understand that if we lose this SEC lawsuit, you know, every other asset has a target on its back besides, of course, you know, a few named, uh, you know, assets that we've talked about in the past. Now, of course, we also see a light here or a light year, sorry, a stellar focused company starts using Ripple customer currency cloud for their currency conversions, which I thought this was pretty interesting to say the least. Now, obviously, this doesn't mean that, you know, stellar or Ripple's killing stellar or anything like that. We've always talked about these assets in you know, in the same sentences before. And I've always discussed how XLM or Stellar Lumens is more so for P2P and of course XRP is for B2B. So I think that this is just kind of a, you know, one of those things that happens where a lot of people kind of connect the dots and think that, you know, XRP or Ripple is killing, you know, Stellar Lumens or XLM, but that's not the case here. But I thought this was interesting to include, um, of course. Now we also talk about XRP being the medium of exchanges for all of the medium of exchanges. Shout out to the bearable bull. Um, but I will say this, you know, with what XRP does, you know, do and how fast it does it with, you know, the low cost fees, with all of the on-demand liquidity base points behind it, the liquidity bridge currency, if you will, with, you know, of course, the liquidity hub and all this kind of stuff with Interledger Protocol. You know, the future looks very bright for XRP. That is why when we're talking about this lawsuit, when we're talking about what's going to be happening after this lawsuit, I, I think that the upside potential for XRP is uh, it's immense, okay? And I don't think people are finally, like, I think there's a few people finally realizing it, but I don't think a lot of people are realizing it. Okay, if XRP, which, you know, from my standpoint, from a lot of, you know, other, you know, lawyer standpoints and individuals in the space standpoints, they're seeing that XRP and Ripple uh, could be coming to a close very soon in regards to this SEC lawsuit in favor of Ripple and XRP. And if that is the case, I just want everybody to understand that is watching this right now. You know, although the price isn't moving just yet, because of course it does move last, you're going to want to be invested into XRP during that time because it is going to be something that this scene has never seen in the past, which is regulatory clarity coming to the space for XRP and pretty much all of crypto, by the way, I should, I should mention as well. So... Ripple is fighting the good fight. Continue fighting on. I will 100% be supporting Ripple and XRP this entire time. Of course, you know, XRP being one of my top tier holdings. And uh, with that being said, let me know what you guys think about this SEC lawsuit. Let me know what you guys think about, you know, the possible catalyst event in the room, which of course is XRP possibly repeating the 2017 massive gains or even possibly more uh, being, you know, the first asset to get clarity in the space as well. Um, first off, we always talk about the FOMO demand on it, the retail demand on it after it does get clarity, you know, the news outlets picking up the, you know, news media for it and all that kind of stuff, massive relistings. The upside potential for XRP is endless at that point. So, you know, with that being said, let me know what you guys think about that. If you guys do more content, you guys could always go check out ncashofficial.com to get my exit strategies, my personal trading indicators, all that kind of stuff. Um, but also if you guys do enjoy this video, guys, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys do more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. But with that being said, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are. And it's beautiful. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.